a very warm good evening to all of you and uh, today i'll be again uh, you know discussing further about the age of revival but prior to that i'll like to uh, you know give a brief uh, summary of what i have discussed in the previous class and have talked about you know robert henderson mm -hmm. and uh, you know and also i have talked about the uh, you know various uh, civil war which broke out after the death of henry 5th okay and as soon as the henry 6th came the civil war broke out and uh, the war of roses uh, which was uh, fought between england and the france and how uh, it actually shaped the history of england and then i uh, talked about you know the effects of war what was the repercussion of the war and what exactly happened and uh, after that i uh, gave a brief idea about thomas mallory uh, so today i'll be dis discussing about thomas Ma mallory in detail and he was born in 1471 and he finished uh, he is supposed to be the author of uh, lay mod the author uh, which was written from 1469 to 1420 and it was printed and published in july 1485 okay he has edited it and re rendered it to the 21 books the title was originally used only for 18 and uh, final chapter was the work which was called uh, you know mod the author and mallory looked back at the first establishment of and the glorious realization of the ideals of knighthood while the mallory text was transmitted to posterity by caxton okay so it was the caxton uh, who brought the printing press to england he actually publish the book uh, by thomas mallory okay now i'll be talking about you know the william caxton okay because he is the uh, important figure because he was he was a famous printer who brought the printing into the england he was born in kent the first translated book which was printed by him uh, in english was rail of histories of troy and translated the printed the game and play of chess next i'll be talking about uh, you know renaissance reformation uh, so there was you know a tudor dynasty uh, which uh, runs down from 1485 to 1603 and the modern english language emerged because of this tudor dynasty okay the accession of james 6th of scotland as james 1st of england uh, it was a watershed event uh, which happened in 1603 and sense of national consciousness was extended to embrace the entire ireland of britain and uh, remember that point of time uh you know spanish armada was also defeated at that point of time and the glory of england was spread in the entire world okay edward third gained victory at the crecy and henry fifth at agincourt in 1558 so lots of battles uh, it was being uh, fought and because of that uh, you know the glory of england was spreaded in the entire part of the world okay and uh, In 1533, Henry VIII brought the preamble to the Act of Parliament, announced the Act of Reformation, 1533, and Queen Elizabeth was born in the same year. So this is an important event, as I told you, that whenever two important, uh, you know, dates are clashing, or for example, the when Act of Reformation was brought and Queen Elizabeth, she was also born in the same year, so it become a significant uh, year. Okay. and also uh, with with that you know uh, act of reformation in england was declared as sovereign country and in 1536 the reform of welsh legal procedure culminated in what was effectively an act of union between england and wales so entire of the england and wales was united in 1453 a uh, union was reinforced when wales was organized in 12 countries on the english model english common law was introduced so somehow the english common law was also introduced in the wales So James VI succeeded Queen Elizabeth in 1603. Scotland was united with the Crown of England under his rule. So this is an important question that under whose rule, or uh, that you know, England and uh, Scotland was united. So it was James VI who actually was a factor behind the union of Scotland and England. In 1452, Henry VIII attempted to forge Protestant alliance by marrying his son Edward to the infant Mary Queen of Scots. Okay. and he because you know matrimonial alliances was very much the part of has remained the very much the part of the history in the indian history also when you will read the uh, you know indian history especially the medieval history so there were lots of mogul and other emperors who have actually married the hindu uh, you know queen so that you know they can have 
uh, uh, you know relation with them and also they can acquire the land she later became elizabeth first now the mary queen of scots become the elizabeth first and henry 8 was responsible for the bro- break with pope henry 8 actually uh, did not recognize the uh, you know consent of the pope and uh, he said that uh, i am not going to listen to the pope and that's so he removed english church from its allegiance to rome so uh, earlier uh, england was heavily indebted to the rome church okay catholic church but then you know uh, he removed the uh, english from the allegiance of rome okay church was left subservient to its royal supreme head now church was uh, uh, you know left in the hands of the supreme head and now he will be the sole authority to decide what is go- going to happen in the church and what is not going to happen and then henry 8th reformation deprived the old catholic order in europe of one of its major pillars and temporarily cut england off politically artistically and religiously from european mainstream so uh, understand the fact that europe has always been uh, you know the center of art craft and culture and tradition but some after the reformation act by henry 8 what happened that england was uh, very significantly or you know cut from the mainstream uh, europe european culture and tradition and uh, not only uh, you know uh, in a political way but in artistically and also politically uh, it was cut from the mainstream of the european culture okay now um, i will be talking about the poetry at the court of henry 8 uh, caxton printing press was established in 1476 uh, so now uh, famous poets who were you know uh, very much famous in the uh, reign of henry 8 was john skelton who was born in 1460 in the character of dame marjory the narrator of his poem philip sparrow by richard uh, uh, in uh, its evolution the uh, the amount of uh, james scrope as scholar okay and then he complains of the impossibility of the writing eloquently in his native tongue uh, dame Mag- marjory the narrator of the fine goers english ode and that of lydgate diffuse okay and then skelton was a tutor to prince henry which is a important thing to remember he was confident of his native tongue he rejoices serenity and in the rhythmic immediacy of ballads and folk poetry in against the scots in uh, which was again published in 1513 he abuses scot and for its challenge to the authority of henry 8 and rubs scottish noses in their signal defeat of uh, you know toden and the bouge of court which was another work the title refers to the free board at king's table a satire on the court of henry 7th printed by wenkin de wert garland of laurel which is another significant poem self laudatory allegory describing the crowning of author among the great poets of the world dedicated to wolsey he was it was dedicated to cardinal wolsey and then philip sparrow it is a lamentation put into mouth of james crow uh, a young lady whose sparrow has been killed by a cat and then colin cloud a complaint by a vagabond of the misdeeds of the ecclesiastics its influence admin spencer magnificence is one of his uh, you know important work speak parrot why not ye come to the court place contain attack on cardinal wolsey and then replication against certain long scotters abused of late 1528 okay and then in the skeleton condemns the f- folly of thomas billney and thomas arthur you can understand that he was very much into criticizing one author or the other and also the monarchy also the four sons of aemon and trojan cycles canton finds space to given an opinion of geoffrey chaucer john gower and john lydgate and george put put in him called him uh, right railing rhymer okay and patrick thomas described wyatt as father of english poetry uh now uh, i'll be uh, stopping this discussion uh and then from tomorrow onwards or in in our next lecture i'll be talking about thomas wyatt so i'm just mentioning about the major and minor works of of the writers who were actually famous in the uh you know age of revival and uh, you can do one thing whatever the writers whatever the names i've taken you can uh you know go to the internet google it open the wikipedia and try to uh you know make a note of it it is really going to be helpful for all of you and i'm sure that you know uh, when you will have the collected notes and when we will start revising before the exam it will be of great help to you thank you so much for your uh, in listening this lecture and please don't forget to like subscribe and share uh, if you really like this lecture thank you so much